So this is the finished product that you'll get when you finish the material. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. Most of it's this part, these two frames are just duplicates of each other with like one value changed. But when you're finished, you'll have this thing where you can change the scale. You can make it finer or less fine, depending on what you want to do. You can also change the color really simply with just this one node right here. You can switch it to like a 0.2, get yourself some purple sandpaper. Why you'd want that, I don't know. Anyways, you can also change the roughness by lowering this or increasing it, etc., etc., and the bump. So all those things are what you'll get when you finish this tutorial, and if you want that, stick around, and let's get into it. So to get started, I've already set up my scene here. I've just got a sphere in the center, got a camera pointing at it, and then in my shading tab, I have a 3D viewport and the node editor. Then just in the rendered preview for the lighting, I'm just using the built-in uh, 3D lighting Blender has, Scene World, I'm using their forest one. So yeah. Anyways, with your sphere selected or whatever object you're using, go ahead and press new. I'm gonna call this sandpaper, like so. If I can type, there we go. Then I'll be pressing shift A and adding a Voronoi texture to make the pattern of the paper. Then I'll press control T if, you, if that doesn't work, go ahead and go to Edit Preferences, the add-ons, and search for the Node Wrangler add-on. It's pretty built into Blender. You just have to check the box, and it gives you some cool shortcuts. Anyways, now that you've done that, just go ahead and take your object coordinates here and move that into the mapping. Then if we Control shift and left-click the Voronoi texture, it gives us a preview of it. Then with this guy, we're just simply going to up the scale really high all the way to a 150. Like this, going to make everything super tiny. Then we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a map range node, like so. Take the color from the map range into the value. So essentially what that is looking like is if we preview the color by Control Shift left clicking again, it makes all these super tiny ones. I'll go ahead and lower the scale to like a 50 so we can see. It gives us this nice pattern. And so yeah. Anyways, if we Control Shift left click this map range, it's converting everything to black and white so that we can visualize it better when we are dividing things up. So the next step is going to be dividing this into the different sections for the different colors based off of the values here. And it's really easy, it just takes a few nodes, so we'll hit Shift A and search for a math node. We're going to switch the function on this math node to less than. So basically what we're saying is, I'm going to, if we plug this in right here to the value, everything less than 0 0.5 is going to be black, and then everything more is going to be white. So that gives us black and white values here, and we're going to want to check clamp on this so that it stays between the zero and the one, so we have the exact values. Anyways, nextly, this is going to be the factor that we divide, but we also want to divide it a little bit more because we're going to use four colors. So I'm going to hit Shift A and search for two mixed RGBs. This is where we're going to store our colors, and then I'll Shift D and duplicate this, like this. So then. Inside of each of the halves, we're gonna divide it two more times. So we'll take this less than node and press Control Shift D right here. And then the less than value, we're gonna change to a 0.75. So now what that looks like is everything less than 0.75 is black and everything more is white. And then we're gonna take that value and plug it into the factor of our first mix node. Then I'm gonna duplicate this little guy with Control Shift D move him down here and change this value to a 0.1 and then move the value into our factor. And this might be a little bit confusing right now, but it'll make sense once we add in our colors. So then I'm gonna control shift and left click our mix node here. And then we're going to start adding in our colors. So I'll give you some exact hex values. You can obviously play with these afterwards however you want because I'll have a node that you can change all the colors at once. But anyways, the value for this one is 381008. Again, that is a 381008, like so. And then the color two is going to be 612C0C. Again, that is 612C0C, like this. This is going to be our dark red and orange. Currently, you see that it's a bunch more orange, and that's okay because this mask is going to take out the extra. And on this next one, I'll control shift and left click this color ramp. This top color will switch to an 884D3D. Again, that is an 884D3D. Almost forgot the hex value there. Anyways, 
Now that we have that color, we're gonna add in the bright one. This is gonna be the little blingy color that's in the here and there. And it's gonna be pretty bright. It's going to be an E4C D9F. Again, that is an E4C D9F, like this. So now we just have to mix these together based on this factor. So then I'll press Shift A, search for a mix RGB node here, plug the value from this guy into the factor, take the color from this one into color one, and the color from this guy into color two. And if we control shift and left click, we can see that we now have our color. But if you'll notice, all of the um, uh, shapes here are sort of the exact same scale, and we don't exactly want it to be the same that way. And so we're going to duplicate this whole thing right here and just change one value so that we get a little bit of variation. So with all of these selected, I'm going to press Control J just to put it in a frame so it's a little bit more organized. And I'm actually going to grab this and move it this way. Then I'm going to select it all again and press Control Shift D, move it up here. And what this is going to give us is a second version that we can mix into the first. All on this Voronoi texture, all we have to do is change this value from a 150 to a 200 so that we can make them a little bit smaller. So if we preview this one with Control shift left click we can see the small ones and then Control shift left click to preview the larger ones. Now we just have to mix them together. So I'll hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB node like this. I'm going to take this top color into color 1, this bottom into color 2. And if we preview this right now, we can see that it's blending in a really weird way. And so we want to give this a factor. And to do that, it's really simple. We're going to press Shift A and search for a noise texture. Right here. And then we need a vector for this. So I'm going to press Shift and right click. And then that's going to give us this extra node here. I'm going to grab it and move it up here. And then I'm going to take this and plug it into our vector. Then I'll press Shift and right click again. And grab it and move it up here just so we stay organized and then we can see the path of where the vector is coming from. Anyways, I'll control shift and left click this noise texture to preview it. And we currently we have this going on and we want to tweak these values a bit. So this noise texture detail, we're going to move to a 16 and then we're going to hit shift A and search for a map range node here. And then we want there to be more contrast because this is going to be the mask that's blending the two values together. And so we don't want it to blur too much, but we also want it to blur little enough so that we can see the difference but not in a big way so make it really subtle but visible so anyways we're going to switch this from minimum to a 0.4 and then this from maximum to a 0.6 and that's just going to up the contrast between everything so then all we have to do is take the result of this and move it into the factor here so what that does is if we control shift and left click this guy we can sort of see right here where the shape and sizes are different in the color, and that is exactly what we want. Now I'm gonna press clamp on this mix RGB right here, just so that we can stay between values of zero and one. Then we take this color and we put it into our base color. And we control shift and left click the principal shader. It is currently looking like this. And then I'll add one more thing to tweak the color, and then we just press shift A, search for a hue saturation node, put that in between. So now we can switch the hue or whatever color we want, we can switch the value to make it darker or brighter or whatever, but I'm just going to leave it on the defaults for now. Then for the roughness, this is a pretty interesting thing because sandpaper is really rough, but there are parts of it that sort of like glimmer, and so we want to be able to account for that. So I'm going to press Shift A and search up a math node. We're going to take the color here and put it into this math node. I'm going to put the value to a zero here just for now. And if we preview this with control shift left click, it changes everything to black and white value. And essentially in roughness, in roughness maps, white means it's purely rough and black means it's not rough at all and it's gonna reflect the light. And so we want it to be mostly white. And so we need to add some things to this. But I'm gonna do that with a multiply node and an add node combined so that we can get some cooler effects. So we'll shift A and search for our math. And then we'll switch this one to multiply here. And then I'll take this top, this bottom value and switch it to a 10 like this. And then take the value from our add node and put it into the value up here. So if we preview this multiply node, we can see that we've multiplied everything by one. But currently there's still a lot of black spots and it's a little bit gray. 
So I'm going to change this add value right here to a 0 0.05. What that's going to do is it's going to um, uh, give us all these, um, uh, it's going to increase the base roughness of each so that when it multiplies by 10, it gets a little, it gets 10 times more rougher. Then I'm going to check cl the clamp on both of these guys. And the reason we do that is because we don't want anything going beyond the scope of 0 to 1. So now we have our roughness map and we can see there's those tiny little spots that will glimmer a little bit. Then we'll take this value and move it into our roughness. And now if we preview our shader again, we can see that it's really starting to come together, but there is no bump occurring here. And that's really simple. We'll just add one node. Shift A, search for a bump node here. We're going to take the result of our mix node here down to the height of our bump and take this normal into the normal of our shader. And so now that adds some bump. And if we preview our bump node here, we can see what's happening. And with, this is a little bit strong, so I'm gonna move this down to a 0 0.5, like this, just so it's not too uh, extruding out too much. So then we'll preview the shader one last time, and we have our finished sandpaper material. I'll go ahead and show you how to add one control so you can scale it uh, as a whole, instead of having to go in here and be like, let me set this to 300, then this to like 250 or whatever. So yeah, anyway, you can hit Shift A and search for a math node right here, switch the blending mode, or the function to multiply, and then press Shift D to duplicate it. Then all we have to do is change this bottom value to the, the 200 scale on this Voronoi texture, and then change this bottom value to the 150, and then switch both of these top values to a one. So by plugging these in, it's not gonna do anything. But now I can press Shift A, search for a value node here, and plug this value into the one, and currently, this value is at a zero, so it's gonna do absolutely nothing for the Voronoi textures. If I set it to a one, it's the original scale. But say I want the sandpaper to be more fine, I can switch this to a two, and then everything gets smaller, and switch it to a three, etc. You get the idea. Switch it to a half, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, now the material is completely finished. You can tweak the color with the hue and saturation, and you can tweak the roughness by changing this multiply value or the add, whichever you prefer. Tweak the bump and tweak the scale. Awesome. Anyways, that is the end of the tutorial and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see y'all guys in the next one. Adios.